Sometimes it takes going back to black to get back to color. That made absolutely no sense. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're doing something really cool and it's inspired by my buddy Brian Dockett who, um, well, he just showed me this last night. So I was like, well, cool. Now I get to show everyone else on Flurn. We're doing some really cool stuff. Um, we're actually gearing up for a big photo shoot this week. Um, we're gonna be just doing behind the scenes. Ooh. Got on my cord there. We're gonna be doing some behind the scenes videos of our shoot that's gonna be this Friday. Um, it's actually gonna be awesome. We're building like an entire pool. Um, we're filling it with black liquid and we're having like white goo or like glue or something drip down onto a model. And we're starting a new series on basically how people get addicted to technology. And we're gonna be using technology as kind of like drugs and putting people in these like big elaborate scenes of how like technology has uh, gripped a hold of their lives. And uh, it's gonna be awesome. I, I really don't want it to be gross looking, but it's gonna have some kind of like, you know, dark elements in it, but I still want it to be pretty at the same time. So if you guys have any suggestions, um, think kind of like the Matrix or, um, you know, Aliens type of movies and things like that. That's kind of the look that we're going for. If you guys have any suggestions as far as like colors, like if we're gonna be using gels for different types of lighting and things like that, let us know. Um, totally down for how to do it. If you guys have done any experiences, you know, have experiences shooting um, black liquid, and um, we really want like a lot of specular highlights to show up, you know, like really nice reflections. So if you guys have any suggestions for that, that'd be awesome. I'd love it. Thanks so much guys. And well, let's get into the episode. I'm not sure why I said thanks so much, but we're going to start. Okay, so today we're doing something with uh, with color here, and this is an image by Matt Stewart, who's an awesome photographer. He's a really funny guy, too. Um, I'm going to link to his portfolio below. You guys, you're going to love it. And uh, we're doing something really cool with color. Basically, we've got this image, and uh, we're, we're going to do some duotone and some tritone, and uh, it's actually built into Photoshop. I'm going to show you guys where that is. You can, you can go to image, down to mode, and uh, you see this duotone thing. Now, the reason it's grayed out here is because you can only actually get to it from uh, a grayscale image. So we don't necessarily want to just convert this image to grayscale. So I'm going to give you guys a couple options when you're doing this. So here's what we're going to do. It's a really cool way to color your photos. So we're going to take this image here that I've just opened in Photoshop, right click on the background, and I'm going to say duplicate layer. Okay, now I'm going to hear uh, where it says document. You can actually just choose a new document and hit OK. And you can see it basically just duplicates that layer onto a new document, which has a lot of really cool uses. This is basically one of them. Like if you want to apply something that is um, maybe a little bit more permanent, something that's destructive, you can just duplicate it to a new document, do something there, and then bring it back if you want to do that. So that's what we're going to do here. Let's go ahead and click on our image, and then we're going to go to mode. You can see Duotone is still grayed out, and the reason is we've got to change this into grayscale. So I'm going to hit grayscale. And that completely gets rid of all the color information. So normally that's a bad thing. Don't do that ever, unless you're pretty much just doing this. So it's in grayscale, which means that, you know, even if I wanted to go and grab colors and things like that and start painting over them, um, it, it's not going to let me. Like, it's it will not let you paint colors on here. You can see I, I grabbed this, like, blue, but it's like, nope, you don't get to paint blue on me. Um, so there's that. We're gonna go now from image and down to mode and we can see because we're in grayscale already, it's gonna allow us to do duotone. So that's the trick guys, is you gotta go from your current image, you gotta go to grayscale and then you can go to duotone, which I know, silly, right? But that's just how it is. So let's try that. We're gonna go to image and I'm gonna go down to, sorry, uh, image mode and then we're gonna go to duotone. Now this is where it actually gets pretty cool. Um, I think you guys are gonna like playing around in here mostly because <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys caught what it's just said there. Um, most <laughs> I was getting a little pissed off last night. <laughs> Mostly because it um, it allows you to do a lot of different uh, color adjustments. All these guys are presets. So you can click on any one of these and uh, it's going to give you presets. And I'm big into presets. I don't use them so much in my, my refined work, you know, the with big, uh, you know, sets and everything like that. I don't really use this sort of thing much. But um, when it comes to just a snapshot photo, I, I love this sort of thing. It's kind of, think about it like the early days of Instagram, right? Before Instagram exists, you had to go in and do this sort of thing. So it's pretty cool. You can just choose your different colors that you want, want to uh, bring it in here. And it's going to just color your image based on whatever you click. So you can just kind of have a lot of fun going through and, and choosing, you know, like what colors it's actually going to bring into your image. Black, magenta, yellow, all kinds of different things there. And 
this is cool. It's cool mostly because it's the presets and uh, you can make your own. So we'll show you guys how to make your own in just a second, but there's a magenta one if you wanna do that, warm gray. Some really cool stuff. Okay, so let's say you wanna make your own. Um, let's just go to monotone, which is just gonna be black and white, okay? You hit duo tone here and you can do black and one other color. So we can click on our color there and you can choose from Pantone um, if you wanna do that. Let's just go to the, I, I don't want that. I just want the regular one. Um, I don't know. Picker. There we go. That's what I, I like looking at this a little bit better than my Pantone colors. All right. So let's say we want like a light green or something like that, or maybe it looks kind of cool with the light blue. There we go. So you can pick your own duo tone as well. It's just a really quick way to do that. Um, let's go over here to tritone and now we can pick three colors. So let's make this Pantone yellow. Why not? I'm, I'm okay with that. And this guy, instead of black, let's just make like a really dark purple or something like that. So you can see it actually does bring in information from each one of these colors. Um, it might not look like exactly like this color or that color or that color, but it is bringing each one of those colors in to your final image. Now, if you wanted to create a quad tone and just get crazy with it, let's hit back on the, my picker here. It's going to do this as well. All right. So each one of these you guys can see is basically going to bring in more or less. I don't know. I've never used this. I clicked on that by accident just now. But it looks like what it's doing is um, influencing your, your curve a little bit more. In other words, it's saying like, you know, actually give me more or less of this color. Wow. I'm a bad teacher. I clicked on something. I didn't even know what it was. If anyone else knows what this is right here that I'm doing, <laughs> feel free to correct me. I don't know everything in the world, guys. I'm just a guy who likes Photoshop. But we can see... Well, I'm just going to not mess with this stuff. My suggestion would be to not mess with that. <laughs> there we go. So this is our quad tone here. And you can see it basically allows you to pick a couple of custom colors. Um, I'm going to stick with the tritone right now just because this is, it's about what I want. You know, this is not something that's going to be like perfect for every single photo or every occasion, but um, it totally works here. So I'm going to hit this OK button and um, all ink names must be specified. That's why I wrote that thing earlier. All right. Because it's like, why do I have to specify my ink names? That's just silly to me. I, I don't want to do that. Anyway, I just specified my ink names. So this is uh, what we've taken before and after. So I'll just hit the uh, Command Z before and the after. A real quick way to do a duotone. Now, if this, is, um, if this is what you want your final image to be, that's totally cool. But we're going to not limit you guys there. You can bring this back into your original image and uh, do some really cool coloring effects with that as well. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab my Move tool. And we're going to hold down the shift key and click and drag. There we go. So this image is still in color. If I go to image mode, we can see it's still in RGB. This one's it's still in, you can see it's in tritone right there. This one is still in color. I'm going to hit F for full screen on that. And underneath it is like the full color image. So I'm going to hit command J a few times just because I want a few different copies of this layer. I want to see what it looks like in maybe a few different blending modes. So this guy, let's, for, for starters, um, start off with something like soft light. You might like that. And you can see it kind of is a cool effect there. Like it kind of gives it a little bit more of like that uh, grungy, dark kind of look. Um, I kind of like it. It looks a little bit more like film. Let's get this guy over here and uh, we're going to change this one to luminosity. And you can see it's going to kind of like gray things out a little bit. All right. This one over here, you can set to something like color dodge or color burn. Ugh, color dodge does not look that good. Color burn also does not look that good. Multiply. This might actually wind up looking cool if you lowered your opacity quite a bit. There we go. Because a multiply layer is going to darken things up, but it's also going to put some color into those. So if you wanted to put this color into your shadows, that's not a bad way to do it. All right. The other way that I would suggest doing this, um, we'll just put this back on normal, is just to lower the opacity of it until you're happy with kind of like the mix that you've got. And this is going to give you like a really nice vintage effect. And I think this is my favorite way to do it out of all the different effects. It's really just like, you know, I did this and just lower the opacity until I thought it looked good. And it introduces a little bit of like grain and things like that. So while you're doing this, guys, um, this is what today's tutorial is about, doing the duo tones and the tritones. But I I like to take things a little bit of a step further just because I think that... Um, I don't know. I would like to learn that if, if I was watching these tutorials. So if you wanted to, let's say you had this image and you're like, yeah, this looks really great. Uh, I want to make it a little bit more like vintagey film kind of look. Um, here's what I might do to take it one step further. Um, I'm going to make a stamp visible layer and then put noise on that layer. And that's going to make it look a lot more like that film look. 
So I'm gonna hit Shift Option Command E, and that makes the stamp visible. Basically, that's just like a visual copy of everything that you see. So it's not a duplicate of this layer. It's not a duplicate of that layer. It takes everything you see and puts it on its own layer. It's really cool. Now we're gonna go to Filter, and I'm gonna go to Noise, and I'm gonna go to Add Noise. And here we can see, by adding these noise, there are a lot of really cool plugins and things like that for adding noise that are not just, um, let's click off monochromatic. Monochromatic's just gonna make black and white noise, but I think things tend to look better if that's not checked. There we go, and you don't need a ton of noise in here. Something like that looks pretty good. And let's just zoom out here. I just wanna make sure that you guys can see it too. So even just adding like a little bit of noise, it does a really cool job at making that like film grain appear a little bit more real. And to bump that up a little bit further, just cause I'm, I'm kind of a fan of this look, honestly. It's, it actually has nothing to do with the look of almost any one of my photos, but I really like the like kind of old aged film look. Um, I don't know, it's just, it, it, it's like sentimental to me. Um, let's just grab this color here. It's a, a light color in the sky and this works best. I'm gonna make it look like almost like a, a, like a light ray or something like that's coming from the sky. Um, this sort of thing is best usually when you're actually, um, when you have a sky. So like you wouldn't wanna just grab the street and do this. Um, grab skies or like light sources and grab that. So I'm gonna grab this color. My brush mode, um, I'm gonna change my opacity to 10% by hitting one. We're gonna change our mode here to dissolve. And that's gonna just create these little speckles. You guys can see them? There we go. So brush opacity is at 10 and my mode is at dissolve. There we go. So you can see those are our little speckles. They're a little bit too big, but we're gonna change this down to like soft light. There we go. And I'm gonna hit Command T, and this is our transform. There we go. And now I'm just gonna bring that down. And that's just gonna bring our little speckles in here from the light. Um, and you can do this a few times. I'm gonna hit Command J and make a copy of that because I want a little bit more of that effect. But mostly it's just like a little bit of light scattering that you know might occur on like old vintage films and things like that. Here we go, we'll show you that before and after. It's these subtle effects that um, I think, you know, you combine a few of these together and they can make some really big changes in your image for a positive future of America and the world. So that's today's effect, guys, and uh, I went a little bit crazy there at the end, but sometimes that just happens. I can't control it. Let me see your guys' effects as well. If you guys are into this sort of thing, um, rack it up. Show me what you got. If you use some of the custom presets that are in there, tell me about what you use there. If you guys are making your own, that would be really cool. And uh, if you guys have come with creative names for your, <laughs> for your colors, tell me about those too. Thanks so much, guys. If you have these images and you've done some of your own, make sure to post them in a comment below and we can see, compare, and see who is the coolest of them all. Who's the fairest learner of them all? Thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Bye, everyone. Milk was a bad choice. <laughs>